Hey everybody, it's Mr. Bureau from Staten Island Tech, and right now I'm actually going to be introducing you to Autodesk Revit. We usually use Autodesk Revit in the spring semester at Staten Island Tech for the sophomores, and it definitely is a different take on CAD than uh, AutoCAD is for a lot of reasons. It's a more modern piece of software that's geared towards architecture and civil engineering, uh, and when you begin um, a file in it, you immediately pick to use an architecture template. Uh, the other templates are just as functional, except they, they come in a little bit more stuff. This is the regular interface. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail here. I just want to kind of show you around the program a little bit. It's a white drawing area. Uh, you're only working with one file at a time. Uh, the files are called RVT files, which just stand for Revit. On the left, you'll see a properties area in which you're going to be able to adjust the properties of any object that's active. It appears that nothing is active right now, but the the drawing space itself is active. Um, on the bottom, we have a project browser. The project browser shows different views of what you're looking at. Oh, sometimes 2D, sometimes 3D views. Uh, along the top over here, you could have multiple views of a drawing open as well as multiple drawings open. The ribbon appears to be the same as AutoCAD. That functions exactly the same. There's a lot of um, preset tools here grouped by function as well as context sensitive ones that will be coming up. Towards the bottom, we have some buttons over here that are not used, used very often. Um, there's a status area on the very, very bottom where right here it says click the select tab for alternates. So that's some instructional materials that normally would be appearing on the ribbon. There is no ribbon inside Revit, which makes for a kind of weird experience for those transitioning from AutoCAD. But once you get used to working without it, it's really not a big deal, though there still are keyboard shortcuts. And then on the bottom over here, we have a, what's called a view control bar. And this basically adjusts what you're looking at. So unlike AutoCAD, we don't really draw lines per se here or or items that eventually become objects, you actually just start with objects. So if I wanted to draw a, a wall that's architectural, I select it over there. You'll see this light green area open up. That's called the option area, and that's how I adjust what I'm working on uh, from the beginning. I'm gonna not use a basic wall, which is generic. Instead, I'm gonna use um, this one, which is an exterior wall that is made of brick and on metal studs. Has a lot of detail been built into it. These four items over here are cameras. You can access them later. But I'm just gonna start drawing. Don't have to turn on or off any snap features. They're on by default and they can be adjusted. You'll see measurements popping up through dynamic input as well as angles. I'm just gonna draw downward about 22 feet. And I'll draw over here about 20. Uh, let's say it's a little bit more, let's say 27 feet. I'll come up. As I come up over here, you kind of see that it's like letting me snap to a projection that's coming from the left. And then I can close it off right there. And what it looks like is very basic. It just kind of looks like a rectangle. Uh, but I'm going to go down here. I'm going to turn the detail on to fine. And I'm actually going to turn the coloring to consistent color. And you could see that there's like a red layer and a gray layer. The red layer is actually the exterior layer. So I'm going to flip these walls over. And now they didn't move at all. I just kind of clicked on the walls and I pressed the space bar to make them flip. So now on my level one floor plan, which is active currently as a 2D view, I have four walls. But if I click into 3D, you'll see very quickly that I can see what this looks like in 3D. It starts off black and white. I'm going to turn on the, the uh, consistent color area to show that it is colored with the detail. And I can go ahead and I can click on a lot of things in here to edit these walls. Like right now, they're 20 feet high and not connected. So I'm gonna select them all and make them instead connected to level two, which makes them just 10 feet high. And I'm gonna go ahead and begin putting windows. So I'll put a couple of windows over here. I could do this in, in 3D if I want to. After I place them, I could just click on them and adjust where they are again in 3D using the keyboard 
or I could drag them around here. If I want to look at them in the 2D view, you can see that they're here as well. I'm going to erase the ones I just drew and put in a couple more in 2D. As you can see, they snap right onto the wall. If I'm not on a wall, I get the little cancellation symbol like I can't put one in. Because they have to be posted by walls. Then, just as easy, I will put a door. Right now it's an interior door, so I'm going to load it in. Just go to here and doors. Pick an exterior door for residential. That one looks nice. I'll load in just this size. Place it right here. Go back to my 3D view. And you can see that there it is. There's my windows and doors. I could also just as easily uh, put a floor in, in 2D or 3D, doesn't matter. So if I go to floor, I'm gonna pick a wood finished floor and I'm gonna draw it so it snaps to the corners of the building. Interior. Just hit the check. And just like that, now I have a floor, which looks like wood. Very, very basic view right now. If I want to turn this to the realistic view to start getting an idea of what it would look like uh, as far as the colors of the inside of the walls and the brick on the outside of the walls, the way the windows and the door look, no problem. Very easy. Also, if I wanted to put a, a quick roof on, I'll go to my level one floor plan again. And I'll pick roof and I want to move it to the second level and I'll draw so it snaps to the outer edges of the building but I'll put a one foot offset which I should have done first excuse me let me just undo that And I want this to be um, a wooden rafter ra uh, roof. I'll just the check to get out of sketch mode. See what it looks like in 3D. You can see it's right here. Um, I could adjust the height of it very quickly right there. Very, very, very basic looking, but I could immediately start working on the interior by creating a section. And then I can click on those edges and kind of like just cut through right just like that. And then I can start working in 3D on here to put things like components and like a desk or a number of other things. Just to give you an idea as to how quickly this works, here's level one of a sample file. And you can see that there's not a lot of detail being shown here, but there certainly is some annotations. They have coloring for the rooms and a few other things, including a legend. Here's what that looks like uh, on a title sheet. So yes, this program also does um, title sheets and title blocks on actual sheets. And that's all built in right here. We look at a 3D view of this particular site. Also, this is the um, consistent color view also, just to keep it very basic looking. Um, here's an example of a, a student made home, which is beautiful. This person worked on the exterior primarily. And uh, basically that's what Revit does. Revit allows you to create um, very realistic looking models of your homes, uh, looking at different floor plans and, and things like that. So like back to this particular thing, I just look at the level one floor plan, the level two floor plan. I can look at the site plan. There is um, different 3D perspectives that are done with cameras. This is a 3D perspective of the kitchen, which will take a moment to load. And you can see that it's just a camera placed in the kitchen that looks at the appliances and the table and 
uh, column inside. Plus, it, it has some windows on the outside. You can actually see into the living room this way. Here are the elevations. These are 2D uh, elevations where you control the levels. Show you a different one from the north view. And again, here are some sheets where we could see the site plan and ele different elevations. The title sheet that we were looking at in the beginning, which has a few camera views on it that are rendered. You can see that this one looks very photorealistic. That's a rendering. This is also a rendering, which I could access right here. Like here's a kitchen render. And here's the render from the front of the home and from the living room. So we have this photorealistic capability built into Revit, which is amazing. But the, the best part is the plugin that we use called Enscape. This is not something that comes with the Revit software. This is a plugin that allows us to have a live uh, photorealistic look at um, the particular project that we are working on. And I could show you um, the student's home that we were designing. Bring that right on the screen here. And you could see that this is um, a perspective from like far above it, but I could move around with my mouse over here and I could also control the weather by like just dragging my mouse to the side and holding the shift key on the keyboard. Well, not the weather, I'm sorry, the time of the day. Have like what it looks like at night or what it looks like at sun up or sun down. You can see some water in the background that the person put in here, some shadows. I'm gonna get you a closer look at this place. You can see some texture of the grass as you walk, uh, as well as the ground. There's a model of a, a car over there. You can see how intricate the, the home is. If I walk towards the wall, you'll see the texturing of the wall pop up, which is really interesting. Um, let me take flight a little bit. And I'll pass over to the back of the home to where we can take a look at what they drew here. You can get like a view of the patio and the beach. It's a little bit crude because this is a, an unfinished project. But there again is the texturing in the wall. There's some water over there which has grass in it. That's definitely a mistake. There's a, a crude fire pit over here. And uh, you could go on the inside too, but this person did not finish the inside. We'll just give you an idea of what it would look like on the inside. There it is, some appliances around. I can go right out the front door again to where the porch is and uh, give you an idea of how this works. So this is the Enscape plugin, which gives us a photorealistic way to make walkthroughs that are completely interactive or scripted. You could actually export these as videos and this is just a plugin for the software. Okay, so that's Revit. And uh, for the remainder of this video, I'm gonna show you a couple of pictures and maybe some clips of other things that you can see. Enjoy, and thank you very much.